Hi, and welcome to Conversations with B'nai B'rith International. I'm CEO Dan Mariash, and thanks for spending some time with us today. If you enjoy our conversation series, make sure you never miss an interview by subscribing to the B'nai B'rith YouTube channel and liking us on Facebook. And of course, be sure to visit our website, b'naibrith.org, to learn more about our humanitarian and advocacy efforts across the globe. Today, I'm privileged to be speaking with the head of one of Israel's most forward-thinking startups. Yaki Yanai is CEO of pioneering Israeli biotechnology company, Pluri. We'll be speaking about the range of next-generation cell-based products that Pluri is creating to improve human well-being, increase sustainability, and advance solutions to humanity's greatest challenges. Though the Haifa-based company rebranded just last month to reflect an updated mission and new partnerships has its roots in regenerative medicine and plans to use its technology to continue driving cutting-edge medical research, Fleury's goal is to create novel cell-based solutions for innovative initiatives in other sectors, including food tech, agritech, and biologics. Yaki and I was appointed president of Pluri in 2014 and CEO in 2019 after a period of being co-CEO since 2017. He served in a variety of executive positions at Pluri since 2006, and he's also a former co-chairman and current board member of the Israel Advanced Technology Industries, IATI, the largest umbrella organization representing Israel's life sciences and high-tech industries. Before joining Pluristem, Yaki was Chief Financial Officer of Elbit Vision Systems Limited and served as a manager at Ernst & Young Israel. Yaki, we're excited to have you with us today. Thank you, Dan. It's a great, great pleasure to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. So just last week, your company rebranded to Pluri in an exciting move. Uh, and for those in our audience who may not be familiar with Pluri or the biotech industry, share with us your company's mission, and what inspired the pivot from Pluristem to Pluri? That's a big question that took me almost a year to answer it. Um, but it's actually the essence of the change that we are presenting today with the change to Pluri. Uh, Pluristem, even before moving to, uh, to Pluri, we are a biotech company. So our base essence is understanding biotechnology, understanding cells, and understanding this tiny organism that builds everything in, in life. We've, we're, we were doing sales and expanding sales for purpose of developing very innovative drug for almost two decades. Um, and uh, over the years, we understood uh, how to work with cells. So what these tiny kitchens need in order to proliferate, to expand very efficiently, how you get them to be in a good shape and how you can manufacture them in high quantity and high qualities. So this is what we did for so many years. Basically a year ago, uh, we understood that uh, this platform that we have is much more than we thought. We used to think that we are a pharmaceutical company and that was Pluristem Therapeutics. But eventually with a very broad and deep strategic process, we understood that we are actually a technological company. We are a cell-based technology platform that can manufacture many different cell types because we are controlling the essence of working with cells. And what you're seeing is the branding of Pluri is actually the fact that we are saying we are a cell-based technology platform. We can do many different cell types, human cells, animal cells, and plant cells. And then eventually our goal or our mission is much broader than we used to think. We are pushing forward and to create this next generation cell-based product that eventually will improve human well-being and increase sustainability globally. So once you're changing your strategy and your mission statement, it was just natural for us to present the name that reflects so much our strategy saying multiply things, plural. We can work with different cells that are relevant for different verticals, but the one thing is common, it always will be to improve human well-being, increase sustainability, and basically build new solution for, for humanity. Well, we're going to drill down into some of the specifics, but um, the obligatory question in an interview like this is, how did you get involved in the field of medicine and technology? <laughs> 
Well, that's a funny, that's a funny answer. I, I hope that you're not going to hold me for that. But you mentioned my background in finance, and, and I, I like to always like, like to look to look at macro trends, global macro trends. This is something that intrigues me. And um, as, as, as simple as it sounds, but about 16 years ago, uh, I saw a, one very simple graph uh, that was uh, representing the change in life expectancy. And I just felt an electric shock in my body when I saw this graph. <laughs> it's, simple, it's, it's actually crazy, but this is how it happened. The graph basically said, humanity has doubled its life expectancy in the last 150 years, from 45 in average to over 80. This is what I saw. And I couldn't believe the numbers. I was looking at it very deeply. It took me a few weeks to understand how the forecast looked like. Is it real? But I understood that it's real. We doubled our life expectancy. And the good news or the bad news, that that's going to continue. So it's not the end of the road. And today people talk about, you know, 120, as, as we know, but even further, people are targeting more than that. And I understood that they need to be part of this industry because that's going to be the greatest challenge ever for humanity. How to handle it, how to build a society, economy, healthcare system, food system that can feed a population that is aging. That this is the first time ever that this happened to us as a, as a Homo sapiens. That basically we're going to change the triangle. I mean, we're going to have more adults than young people, and that's that's an amazing phenomenon. So this is eventually what led me to make the decision to step in into the biotech industry in order to make the change. I understood that if it, it's a, such a big problem, I need to be part of the solution. And this is the time that when I decided to join Cluister. Well, I know you're doing uh, a lot of fascinating work uh, at the cutting edge of science and tech, but can you start uh, by telling us what regenerative medicine is and, and how that will improve the quality of life? So let's talk about numbers and figures again. Um, we should understand that, and I think that in the US, that I guess most of the audience or part of the world are US taxpayers, we see the significant increase in, in the healthcare cost over the years, which is a very frightening uh, phenomenon. Regenerative medicine is basically saying, we need to treat people differently. While today the elderly population or the sick patients or the sick population are consuming a lot of drugs, a lot of therapeutics, uh, sometimes over decades. I mean, all the elderly people can consume drugs for decades and decades and decades. Our healthcare system is built on chronic treatment, hospitalization and drugs, hospitalization and drug for as long as we can bear it. But the numbers are actually not very good. So we're seeing that the efficacy of these treatments is limited, and we're seeing a continued increase in our healthcare spending, that actually the majority part of it is contributed by increasing number of hospitalization. This is the biggest part of the pie of our health spending. Regenerative medicine saying, you know, chemical drugs is, 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 is what we have today. Biologics is maybe better. But can we develop an agent? that is built from a much more sophisticated component, cells, in order to bring or to provide a better uh, outcome and a better therapeutic. The regenerative medicine is basically saying the drug that you want to treat people with it, it's actually cells. Bring young, potent cells to an elderly population. You should know which cells to bring and what disease and how many of these cells, but eventually allow these cells to make the repair, the regeneration, it's a drug, or it's, a, it's a product that you don't consume as in a chronic manner. You actually treat once, twice, or maybe three times, but eventually it needs to create a major effect on human well-being and to help the body to regenerate itself. When we are young and in good shape, our body knows how to regenerate itself, to heal damaged tissue, to replace them. Our placenta cells, in this case, that we are bringing, they allow the body, they push the body to start and to heal and to, 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 to enhance the regeneration power that, that we have, providing them a very broad range of biologics that are derived from cells and pushing it uh, to a much better regeneration, which eventually reflects also to major change in, in the economics. 
When did uh, Plury uh, first make an impact on the medical field? When we started in 2006, um, I think that this is the time that we said, let's try to pick the right source of cells. People are doing bone marrow cells for decades, even fat cells. But we said, we understand. Our philosophy was very simple. We would like to use cells because we understand the healing regeneration power of cells. But we also wanted to be uh, allogeneic. Allogeneic meaning no match is needed between the donor and the patient. So I, I can take cells from healthy volunteer or from healthy tissue. I can expand the cells very dramatically and eventually use this source of cells to treat different human beings without having a blood match or genetic match whatsoever. So this is the allogeneic approach. And we understood that we like to have the allogeneic approach with young and potent cells. And eventually we understood that placenta can be an optimal organ for such treatments. Um, we were the first company in the world that basically is point on the placenta and saying, this is a unique organ. We are not utilizing it at all, but it's actually an amazing organ for immunological point of view. And it took probably a good decade or even 15 years that the placenta got the acknowledgement. And today there is a lot of research around the placenta. Uh, even the NIH understand and say that placenta is probably the least known organ, but probably one of the most promising one for regeneration. Um, and we see a lot of things that happen around the placenta. So we, we made our contrib contribution on pointing on the placenta as a great source. And eventually with the technology, how to expand cells in a very efficient way that will allow us to treat so many people in a very effective way. Now, give me an example, if you would, uh, someone who is aged. Um, what, what kind of application would there be uh, for someone uh, who is older and uh, experiencing this difficulty or that? So today we are still treating um, patients, sick patients. It's not going to be always the case, I guess, 10 or 15 years from down the road. But today um, we are using these placenta cells uh, to treat patients with severe uh, leg is leg ischemic leg conditions. So people which are obese, uh, uncontrolled diabetes or heavy smokers that having a very poor blood flow into the legs with a high risk for amputation. We had a very exciting program around this uh, indication. We are treating patients that are elderly, that are falling down and breaking the hip. We just presented data that our cells has the ability to increase significantly the muscle strength uh, of these patients after, for example, hip fracture surgery. We have an exciting project with the US government, with the NIH and the Department of Defense, using a different cell type that we are developing in order to support regeneration or healing after exposure to very high level of nuclear radiation, like in Fukushima or in Chernobyl. So there are both applications that we can develop. We are providing the right product for the right indication, uh, but these cells can do many things to support uh, healing and regeneration. So, Yaki, looking into the future and, and hopefully in the near future, um, cures for cancer have, have by and large eluded uh, researchers over uh, so many years. Um, what do you see as the future here in terms of cells and, and conquering uh, this, this terrible disease? So I think that um, the oncology and using cells, different cells that we are using was a very good example of actually how powerful cells are. Um, we know the immunotherapy or the CAR T that made a very big progress in the last five, six years that they um, showed us that the fact that you are in introducing an agent, a drug, that has the ability to communicate and to interact with the patient body, it's an amazing concept. This is, this is what cell therapy is about, the ability of the cells to interact with the body. And once you have a, this smart agent or smart drug that can adapt uh, the, the, the activity or the secretion based on the signaling of the body, it's a very powerful agent. So in immunotherapy, we're seeing a very good progress and hopefully that's something that can be support 
uh, for, for, for uh, very severe cancer disorders that we see. I believe that in the hematology field, we're going to see major progress using surgeons we use in order to create much better effect that we're used to see today. I'm a very big believer, you know, that what we were able to show today in a phase three study, that, the cell, that our cells can support muscle regeneration. It's an amazing part in order to allow all of us to age in much graceful way. I don't know if you know that, Dan, but from age 25, each and every one of us lose about half percent muscle mass each and every year. It's sad, but these are the facts. And if we're able to introduce an agent that can support that, so that's something that hopefully will allow us to age much nicely or in a much, much graceful way. And when our time comes, it comes, but let's do it right. So I see many, many indications that we can provide healing versus calling treatment. But I think the most important, we see that these cells can provide a much better quality of life, which is so important for elderly population in an aging world. Well, let's go from uh, the medical field into food tech. Um, earlier this year, Pluri announced a new partnership to develop cultured meat with uh, Tanuva, Israel's largest uh, food producer. Talk more about uh, this collaboration and uh, how you see Pluri's role in, in the food tech space. <clears throat> So this is something that, as I mentioned, the process that started about a year ago, when we understood that our key competitive advantage is in our ability to manufacture cells in high quantities and high quality. We understood that our proposition goes way beyond pharma because there are many different verticals or many different industries that actually need muscle production. So my very talented management team, we spent a few good weeks on working on the strategy for the next five to 10 years and eventually we came with identifying a, about five different verticals that may need or may utilize very efficiently a, our technology for massive cell expansion. And we understood that this is the moment that we're expanding our proposition globally. And the food tech was one of the main industries that we saw an essential need. I think that today all of us see that. And we started to hear phrases that were not used very commonly in the past, like, like food security. People are very nervous about food security. Obviously, the war between Russia and Ukraine, people understand how fragile is that and how important that we'll be able the local ability or domestic capability to produce our food or to, many, to, to, to manufacture it. But we are seeing these global trends that goes together with the major impact that we're seeing of global warming and the fact that all of us started to be worried about sustainability because it's going to impact our life and our kids' life, as simple as that. So once we understood that the proposition is quite big, we, are, we know that we are, we know a lot about cells. We know how in manufacture, almost how to think like cells, but we don't know too much about food. We are not a food company. So this was the time that I, in, I called the CEO of Nuva, Eyal Malis, which is an amazing guy, and I told him, you know, this is what we have in mind, expanding to different verticals. At Nuva, it's a multi-billion dollar company, the largest food company in Israel. And I asked him, is it something that you're seeing in part of your growing engines in the future? And he said, oh, absolutely. And then this time we decided to sit together to build teams and to see if the technologies that we have, together with their knowledge, can, can build something which will, will be a collaboration between actually two proven pioneers that everyone is very good at, at its field. And it ended up with a joint venture that we built. At Nuva made the investment into the joint venture. And the fact today that Plugistem is or, uh, responsible of building the cell side, the technology, Nuva is bringing it its knowledge and customer, taste, logistics, and food industry. And we are maybe having a very fast and good progress utilizing our technology for cultured meat. And it works actually even behind my expectations. So the plan that we have started is proposed to complete proof of concept in 22 and to launch first product in 23. And today, almost five months after initiation of this collaboration, uh, we feel very good with our expectation and in our timelines. So this is something as far as I know, the only situation or the only case in, in the world that you see a collaboration of a biotech company with a food company, probably for good reason it happens in Israel because here people talk with each other, 
uh, and hope the, I hope that this model will be able to, to, to prove itself. We already agreed in principle to, to expand to additional two different verticals, fish and seafood and cultured milk, using our expertise in sales and their expertise in food. So we are looking here at a very, as a very big vertical, the deployment of the, our technology into the food tech. But the concept is quite straightforward, building the company. So there is a separate management team for this company and separate team that we are building. They are relying on tourism expertise and platform. But this is something, and this is something that allowed them to move very quickly. And it's a, it's quite an exciting thing, I must say. Yaki, we're talking about cells, but do you, do you produce your products in-house and, and guide us through the, the key aspects of that operation? I think it's a very important question because cells, like probably a little bit different from other industries that we know, it's an industry that requires heavily involvement of technologies and expertise. So we are one of the few companies in the world that actually have a in-house manufacturing based here in Israel in Matan Haifa, a, a big industrial park that we are, we are based here. We build our GMP facility for cell expansion with a major investment of hundreds of millions of dollars. It puts us in a position that we can manufacture cells in a very high scale batch to batch consistency and actually we are, our essence started with working on the pharmaceutical industry. So we are looking at very high quality procedure, highly regulated. We used to work with the FDA and the EMA and, and, and others on drug development. So the in-house manufacturing give us a very competitive advantage in our ability to produce these sales. So we have all the disciplines in-house from sourcing of false material to manufacturing, QC, QL, development, so that's the reason that we can so easily in a very agile way uh, get into new projects because all the knowledge is here and everything is, is, is in under one roof. And that's something that gives us a very competitive advantage. You talk about your, your cooperation with FDA and with NIH. Are you getting a lot of interest uh, uh, outside, beyond the United States uh, internationally uh, in, in the work you're doing? And, you know, you cited... The, the Ukrainian uh, situation where uh, so much of the world depends, so much of actually the developing world depends on, on wheat um, from Ukraine. Um, and there have been these, these terrible disruptions um, and particularly in, in a place like Africa and, and, and other places. So are, are people reaching out to you and saying, help us? So it's, it's a fascinating process that, uh, you know, we are starting, once we started with this new initiative for actually food security and sustainability for the cultured food, we get a lot of applications and a lot of great ideas from many potential partners globally. We need to work on a, on a very solid ground here in order to make, to make the, right, the, the things very right. So obviously, you know, we are working here in Israel. Israel, while Israel is a big appetite, we are a limited market. It's only 9 million people. So, but obviously our primary market is working with the U.S. markets. But uh, you should remember that the Nuva, which is our partner, uh, the major shareholder is the second largest food producer in China, for example. So we get a lot of interest from these places. And obviously we're getting calls from Africa that food security is critical over there. And we started to get calls from places that it's very difficult to grow food, either livestock or, or agriculture. And once people understand that it opens their imagination, that we can do many different sales type and basically manufacture our, our food, it's a very interesting discussion. We would like to start, of course, in our home base, which to do it here in Israel with Nuva, which are very strong here. Then we're going to expand to the US. And once it's going to happen, we're going to open, we'll be, we will be open ourselves to, to additional territories, but it's coming, you know, and it's coming now, not in a, in a in thousand years. That's, that's exciting news. I want to ask you um, about uh, Israel as a global leader in biotechnology. You know, you've talked about your uh, collaboration with Tanuva, and you said something very interesting. You said, you know, we're, we're a small country and we talk to each other. 
Um, so why do you think that, that Israel is a global leader? Uh, you've said, for example, that Haifa, where Pluria is headquartered, uh, will become the world's biotech corridor. So talk to us more about that. <laughs> so I have several things that guides me to everything that I do. I truly believe that you know biotech is going to be the largest industry in the world. As I mentioned, it relates to the fact of aging and the fact that many of the things that we're doing today, like food tech, they are actually a spin out or they're actually related to biotech. So that's the biggest industry in the world. It's going to be the biggest industry in the world. Israel is a unique place. It's a small place. Uh, people are very, I think, energetic and ambitious. And uh, I think people are not afraid to make some brave steps forward or <laughs> in order to, to try to, to change the to change the, the, the facts as we know them today, to change to change paradigm. And biotech is a very, very good example. I told you I started that so many years ago, and I remember doing an essay. Yeah, I was as part of, of my role with the Israeli advanced technology industry. I was representing life science in the culture. And I said, you know, we're a small country. We're seeing the number of biotech companies that we have. But I'm looking at Switzerland. And these guys, they have the same number of, of population. And they also don't have natural resources. But how come the pharmaceutical industry is so well developed in Switzerland and not in Israel? And we started this discussion internally. And we understood that... Uh, basically access to uh, limited resources. And, uh, the people are developing great ideas, but are selling them very quickly. They're not building businesses around them. And eventually, and I, we started with this journey 15 years ago, 10 years or so ago, and I said, that's gonna be one of the leading industries in Israel. Everybody knows Israel for being the startup nation, but it's our job and our role to make this country a biotech nation. It's a great industry. And this is partially part of the way that we are believing in you know, making this world better and not, not being afraid of changing things. And today, 10 years later, we tripled, tripled the number of life science companies in Israel. We actually, I always know, I'm doing down the comparison with the US, not with Switzerland, because we are much more advanced in number of companies than Switzerland. And we're seeing the number of employees that are working in this industry, and it started to grow. Um, so I think that the combination today, and we're living in a fascinating times where biology and high tech and physics and chemics, everything is actually like merging, allow us to build companies as we do in cell therapies, but also going for food tech, and, and everything is actually under. And Israelis are very good in collaborating with each other, understanding ideas to be able to pick them quickly, and to try to push it, uh, we, even if they think that it's a, it's a high risk. And eventually it started to translate to more and more successes. It's, it's coming all over. I'm seeing the level of innovation that I'm seeing on a daily basis. It's actually mind blowing. Uh, and that's something that makes us very optimistic to see so much thing, things happening around. Uh, and I believe that as Israelis, we have as a, an important role of, in that. And we know to know how to work very closely with our partners in the US that are teaching us how mature company looks like and having great ideas is great, but how it's going to look on the next step. Uh, and I'm seeing this industry maturing and maturing, and I'm very optimistic of what's going to be here a few years down the road. It, it's definitely moving to the right direction. You know, we hear so much about sustainable future. You know, to build a sustainable future, we hear it at the United Nations and we hear it um, in so many other places. Um, give us a view. What are your What are your next big projects, and and what do you see for Pluri over the next five to ten years to create a more sustainable future? So sustainability it's a big thing, and it's a serious thing that people should really look at it. Um, sustainability is around everything that we are doing. For example, the our new venture with Nuva, the food tech. We are talking about reducing about 94% the usage of water, 90% reducing pollution. So it's basically about saving our lands, saving our water, and saving our, you know, the air that we are we are breathing. 
And uh, we are in unique times that we are actually seeing the impact of this global warming and how to be how to be able to, to act and to operate. So this is something that we should look at it very, very seriously from, as I mentioned in, in food tech, I'm about one kilometer or I don't know, a mile from, from, from the Mediterranean Sea. And for you that are diving, as, as I do, I think that all of us know how the seas look today and how they look 15 years ago. And if we'd like to make sure that our environment, health, and eventually our well-being will be in a reasonable way, we should come with solutions. And maybe that's my nature, but I always laugh. I'm saying I'm 25 years veggie. So when I want to eat a good burger, I'm building a company in order to make sure that we're going to make it happen. Uh, and today we have the knowledge and technology to make things happen. And I'm one of the most, today we are very focused on food and cultured meat, but definitely seasoned food, efficient seafood is a big thing that is coming. But then we're seeing agri-tech as something which is very major. We should understand that eventually we are poisoning our soil and our air and eventually our, ourselves, what we are consuming. So food tech is not only about to be able to manufacture and about you know to be able to not to utilize animals as we use them today and, and, and maybe to, to bring the, the, the humanity part of it. I believe that we can actually create healthier product that will be able to support sustainability, but also to feed us and to nutrition ourselves in a much better way. This is where we are heading. So it's not going to be food that it's going to be a very quality food that we are going to manufacture in a batch-to-batch -batch consistency and standard that are used today for developing technologies for a biotechnology industry. So it's a very big dream. It's a very ambitious dream, uh, but it's doable. And as long as I believe that it's doable, I'm going to push it until we're going to make it happen. Well, my, my final question is, uh, is a companion question uh, to the one I asked about uh, a sustainable future. Uh, what are you most proud of? Uh, during your time at Pluri? Or, or what are you most looking forward to, or both? Hmm. So I'm very proud. Um, I'm very proud in my team, I must say. Uh, I have a bunch of talented guys here, and, and, and in Pluri, we also put a lot of emphasis. I call it sustainability, but it's also you know the ability to give an equal opportunity for everyone. And Israel is a very unique place that uh, we have Jewish here and Christians and Muslim and Druze and men and women and black and white. In the US, you know, it is probably similar to what we have there. And I'm very proud that people feel at plural as they feel at home and they can bring their voice in a very authentic way. So they're not to fake anything. And I'm very proud that our team understand that we are doing something which is bigger than each and every one of us. We're having a big dreams, and I had the luxury to be last week at the Paris Center in, uh, in Tel Aviv, Paris Center for Peace, the late President Paris, meeting his son. And we had a chat about you know, the future of biotech and how it's going to look like. He's very, very, very interesting guy, Henry Paris. And I think that some that is something that we are doing, but give me the, effort, the extra confidence. And he told me, Yaki, you know, my father always said the one thing that I'm sorry about that I didn't dream a bigger dreams than I than I did. So we dream biggest dream here. It some sometimes may sound ambitious, sometimes naive, but all of them are very relevant and very doable. So Plu is about changing the way that we are we are treating ourselves. I think that we have. We are really trying to make a, a very, very big change and to, to really pioneer a biotech revolution globally. And I'm not afraid to say that because I believe that we'll be able to, to do it. And I invite many, I mean, I guess the audience are, all of us are part of this amazing journey that we're gonna use technology for the benefit of all of us. So I feel blessed to live in such an exciting time and to lead such, such an exciting uh, initiatives. Well, to learn more about Pluri, formerly Pluristem, and the company's vision for a healthier and more sustainable future, visit pluri-biotech.com.
Yaki, thank you so much for being with us and sharing the pioneering work that Pluri is doing. Yet another example of Israel as not only a leader in forward-looking technology, but a leader worldwide in making the world a better place. It's been great speaking with you. Thank you very much, Dan. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, our thanks to Pluri CEO Yaki and I for giving us a detailed look at Pluri's pioneering role in a biotech revolution that will help improve human well-being and address some of humanity's greatest challenges. And thank you for tuning into this conversation with B'nai B'rith. Now, if you enjoyed this interview, make sure that you catch all of our programs by subscribing to the B'nai B'rith YouTube channel and by liking us on Facebook. And be sure to visit our website, benebrith.org, to learn more about our important work, including our efforts supporting Ukrainian refugees, as well as those still within Ukraine's borders. For my guests, Yaki Yanai, and for B'nai B'rith, I'm Dan Mariashin. Join us again soon.